beautiful, how beautiful the, uh, the day is today. This is truly the day the Lord has made. We are excited and glad in it. We welcome you to our old Audubon service this morning. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. We are counting down to Resurrection Sunday. We are counting down to the soon resurrection of our King. And how beautiful it has been this particular day as we're coming out and we can see light at the end of the tunnel. We actually can see us coming to the end of our pandemic. We wanted to welcome everyone. Um, we wanted to start our time in prayer. <clears throat> we all also wanted you um, to, as you're praying, remember at the end of the bulletin, there is a prayer list. So we're asking that you print it off at the end of the bulletin. So as we're praying, that you can not only pray for the people who are in the prayer list, but that you can continue to pray throughout the week. Amen. Let us bow our hearts, our minds, our spirit toward the living God. Lord, we so thank you for this day. God, as we're changing time zones and our days are getting longer, we have more time to give you praise and glory. We thank you throughout this season, God that you did not leave us alone, but you continued to comfort us as we re reached out to you. God, throughout this service today, touch our hearts and our minds, touch our very being, God. Let us, as we fellowship one with, the, one with each other, to know that we do this not God of necessity, but because we love you and we love each other. We thank you, God, for all of these wonderful things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Friends of God, believe this. God loved the world. God loves the God world. We are the beloved. May the truth of this great love story shine through our worship today and renew our sense of calling. So come with your tiredness, your frustrations, and your discouragements. Come with your doubts, your fears, and your longings. Come to discover yet again how Jesus reveals God's love and mercy. Come in friendship to God and to each other and in friendship to the world to listen to, for God's word to us to offer our prayers and to renew our calling. Please join me and unmute yourselves. Friends of God, Friends of God. Let, let us worship. Us worship. Mm -hmm. 
And our opening hymn today will be number 340 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, 340. Let us pray. Too often, too easily, our eyes are drawn down, down God, to the suffering of the victims and the pain of perpetrators, to the wounds we inflict on others and the wounds we inflict on ourselves. We need to see these things and pray, but we also need our eyes to be lifted to God, to the signs of your life among us, to the touch of your healing on our souls, to the cross that cast its liberating shadows across all of our human affairs. We need our eyes to be lifted, God, so our hearts may be filled with faith and hope and love. Amen and amen. And our prayer response this morning is found in the faith we sing, 2219, goodness is stronger than evil, 2219.
Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Numbers. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. And I'll ask you to stand in your hearts for the New Testament lesson, which comes from the book of John, the gospel according to John. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been in the sight of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, there have been so much to complain about. There are things that we justifiably complain, but there are things, God, that you have given us that give us grace and mercy and joy. Help us see our complaining for what it is, complaining. But even more, help us open our eyes to see your grace and mercy among us, God. Help us to be able to see that you are here with us, that we may look up and live. We thank you, God, that you are Lord. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. We have been through a year of Hades. We have been through a year of death and disease. If we have ever needed healing, we need it now. We know of God as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us. God promised us to heal us, even if the stuff that we need healing for doesn't completely go away. I want us, I want to take us back to the Old Testament scripture today. The scripture of the snakes in the desert. Let me give you a little context. At this particular time in our Hebrew scriptures, the children of Israel have been uh, have gotten out of Egypt. They have gone past the Red Sea. They have gotten water from a rock and they actually can almost see this promised land that God has given them. But they have to go through a land called Edom. Now, the interesting thing about Edom is it was created by Esau, and Esau is the brother of Jacob. And Jacob, we know from our Hebrew New Test Hebrew Testament, was name was changed from Jacob 
to Israel. So the Edomites are actually cousins, they're relatives of the Israelites. And so God is not going to destroy someone who he has also blessed and created. So Moses went to Edom and said, we need to go through your land to get to the place we need to go. Now, the thing about this, this particular scripture is that Jacob, before his name was changed, his name meant tri trickster. And what he did was he treats, tricked Esau out of his birthright. So you can imagine they really weren't friends. In fact, the Edomites uh, refused to allow Israel to go through their lands. I mean, completely refused. And Moses said, listen, we won't take your food. We won't take your water. We won't do anything. Just let us go through. And they said no. So much so that they brought an army to the borders of Edom and said, you will not go here. So the Israelites had to go around Edom which means they needed more food, more water, and more importantly, more time. And this is where our scripture picks up. People started complaining. They started saying, I'm tired. I'm tired of this desert. I'm tired of this heat. I'm tired of walking. I'm tired of everything. And even more, they said, and this was the key, we're tired of this food. We're tired of what this is that we have to eat. This is miserable food. Now you would have thought that they would have understood that God had miraculously given them manna in the wilderness. All they had to do was pick it up, put it in a box and pot and eat it. That was it. And the water that they had had also been miraculously given by God. So when they were complaining, they weren't just complaining from about Moses. They were complaining about the provision that God had given them. So you can imagine God got tired. Boy, you I have to think about the fact that I can complain so badly that God can get tired of me complaining. So what God did was sent to the people poisonous snakes. Now, it's bad enough that they were snakes. I am definitely not a snake fan, but the snakes were poisonous. And every time someone was bitten, not only was it poison, but it was painful. And they died a very painful death. The children of Israel actually at this time understood that they had sinned. And they went to Moses and said, guess what? We screwed up again, again. So Lord, please, please, take the snakes away. That was the, their prayer. Take the snakes away. But God told Moses something interesting. He said, take bronze, fashion it on a pole like a snake and lift, lift it up. And if the people would look up to the snake, they would live. God did not take the snakes away. We believe that the origin of the symbol for healing, the caduceus, may have come from this origin story of the snakes on a pole. On a pole. Snakes are not something that we really could reason with. You can't sort of uh, charm a snake. You can't just make it go away. It's going to go where it wants to go. 
and at best snakes are something you don't want to step on the thing about it is that god told moses not that the snakes would go away but that they had to look up look up to be healed what are we to learn from this story from the snakes first complaining did not move god i gotta talk about myself too complaining doesn't move god we have a lot of things to complain about we have a lot of things to be to be frustrated about especially in the midst of this uh pandemic but we have to figure out how to talk to god con constructively so for instance if i don't like how i look then don't just complain change it if i have an issue with my boss an issue at work don't complain about it figure out what my issue is that i can work through it if the weather is too hot then take off your sweater. If it's too cold, put a sweater on. You can't really change the environment. You can only change how you react to your environment. Change how you re relate to it. As the old saying says, uh, goes, be the change that you want to see because God always answers prayer, always. God always answers prayer. The thing is, it may be the prayer that's answered. It may not be the answer that we expect. God told Moses to fashion the very thing that they were complaining about. He told Moses to put it where they had to see it to be healed. There was nothing miraculous about the fastening of the snake. There was nothing miraculous about the bronze. There was nothing miraculous about the pole. It was the healing power of God and their belief in it that actually allowed them to heal. When they looked up, they had to see the very thing that they were complaining about. It was the looking upward that caused the healing, not the brass, not the pole. The thing about it is God always wants us to look for him for the answers, not look down at what the issue is. Remember, snakes slither on the ground. If you keep looking on the ground for the snake, you're not only going to be bitten, but you will be killed and die. But if you look up to God, then recognize you may still be bitten, but God gives you and has the ability to heal you. The children of God, of Israel, asked that the snakes be taken away. God answered their prayer, but he did not take the object of the fear away. This be, brings me to my last point. There are consequences for our sin. sin. What made God send the snakes in the first place was the fact that they complained about the miraculous provision of God. They were ungrateful. They couldn't see that God continued to heal them. They couldn't remember that they had been um, delivered from Egypt. They couldn't remember that they had gotten water from a, a rock. They couldn't remember that there was a pillar of fire at night and there was a cloud that led them by day they couldn't remember that god has continued to give them an answer a promise that they were working toward it hadn't gotten there yet 
but they were working toward their promise. So God didn't stop giving the gift. God just made them so that they could recognize that the heat, that the complaining that they had was not the answer. Quite often, God has to give us the strength to go through the very thing that we're complaining about. God doesn't always take it away. God doesn't always take away the thing that we're complaining about. They asked for healing. What they got was not just healing, but it was the fact that they had to endure what their issues were. In our world, in our nation, in our communities, we are in desperate need of healing. We have been praying for God to heal our lands. I believe, I believe that God has healed us and God will heal our land even before, but we still have to suffer the consequences of the issues that you and I and all of us have had. We've often walked away from God. We've often not been grateful when God has done something for us. We almost expected to do that. And so when God just does things, we say, oh, but not necessarily give God the glory. Sometimes God has become an afterthought for, all, for us. We often say there's, there's nothing else to do but pray as opposed to praying in the very first place. When things get so bad, we try to figure out what we could do, then we resort to prayer. What would the world have looked like if we prayed first? This all started with the complaint that God had not done enough for us and that the provision that God had given was not good enough. When, like the Israelites, we repented, God heard our prayer, but left our reminder that there are consequences to our actions. God didn't take away the object of our discontent. In other words, the snakes in our lives, but God did allow us to go through it, though we still might be bitten. The snakes are a reminder of our mortality and our need for God. How much better would it be if we all looked to God first? I, I just wanna give you a personal story. So I, like you all, have been working through this pandemic. It's not always been easy. In fact, most of the time it's not easy at all. I have been quarantined like everyone else. But when the time came to get the shot, I was excited about getting it. I was ready to go. Then my daughter reminded me that her wedding was coming up and I needed to buy, and this sounds like maybe a silly thing, but a dress for her wedding. And I was so used to going online and finding something that I had done that and I couldn't find anything to wear. So I was forced, hear me, forced to go to the store. I told my husband, I had not been to the mall since March, since March. So I said, okay, I've got to go find something to wear. But as I got in the car, I began to feel afraid. I begin to be afraid. Now I'm vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. I'm a month out. I should not be afraid, but I had been quarantined so long that the fear of going out, it may have sounded unreasonable, but the fear of going out grasped me for a minute. And I realized that I'm like everyone else didn't want to be affected and had been around people and, 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 and. And I remembered the scripture that I had been studying for the entire week. 
And so I had to look up to God and say, you know, God, this fear of people is a snake. You've given me not only the, the spirit of you, but you said your spirit is not able to tolerate fear. You gave me wisdom and love and a sound mind. So this is not a sound mind being afraid of people because I love people. I've been waiting to hug people. So I sat in my car and I said, Lord, take away from me this feeling of not wanting to be around people. But guess what God did? He did not take the people away. What he gave to me was a spirit of God consolation that God is always with me and that there is nothing to be afraid about. So I put my keys in the car and I drove to the mall. And when I got to the mall, I remembered how I liked going there and I loved the people. And when I finally got to the store, a lady said, do I know you? And I said, I don't know if I remember you. She said, but I've seen you. She says, you're a minister, aren't you? And I said, amen. She says, hallelujah. She said, God is good. It's so good to see other people out and about. I never would have gotten that after information and affirmation if I had let my fear rule. So the, the moral of this story is we've been through Hades. We've gotten to the point where we don't even trust people we know. We don't even feel comfortable anymore. But don't let the snakes in our lives, fear, jealousy, um, uh, lack of, of com comfort, don't let that bite us, poison us, and stop us from doing what God has called us to do. God has called us, people of God, to be the light in this desert that we're here. So look up, be healed, recognize that God has never left us and never forsaken us. Ask the Holy Spirit to give us strength to go out into this world again and be who God has called us to be. May the Spirit of the Lord comfort you and be with you. L may God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. And please join me in our response to the sermon. It will be number 375 in the United Methodist Hymnal, There is a Balm in Gilead.
Good morning, friends. Um, I must confess, when Betty Colby asked me to give the mission moment for this week's uh, service, that it, the prospect is actually kind of, you know, scary. Um, I'm not one person, I'm not a person who particularly likes to discuss their, their background or history um, and kind of just stay in the background and, um, you know, make sure things run smoothly at the church. But I couldn't say no to Betty, so I will do my best at uh, telling my story this morning. Uh, for those of you who, who do not know, uh, my family has actually been involved with Old Otterbein since the 1920s uh, when they moved from Richmond, Virginia to Baltimore. I'm fourth generation member of the church, starting with my great grandmother on my mother's side. Um, and many of our family members attended church and were members of the church uh, for the past several years, obviously. Um, being a young person and growing up in the church, it's not always to be easy to be taken or seriously as a leader. I can remember when I was first starting out, um, getting involved when I was in high school in leadership in the church. Um, I didn't really receive a lot of opposition. And in fact, I received a lot of encouragement from the older members who I'd known since I was a little child. So that was very encouraging. Um, I started and beca became involved in leadership in the church when I was 16 on the church music and worship committee and uh, went on from there to be on the church council and to actually chair the church council before I was 21 years old, which I think is pretty remarkable. I served on the SPRC committee, served as the chair of the SPRC committee, served on the church trustees, was chair of the church trustees, and most recently have been tre the treasurer for the church. I think Old Otterbein is a very special place. Both the buildings and the congregation are very special to all of us. And so my most recent undertaking has been to agree to co-chair the Capital Campaign Committee with Reverend Cindy Burkert. Uh, we just got started a couple of weeks ago. Everybody should have received a message uh, through constant contact as well as talked about in the services. Uh, but part of our 250th anniversary celebration as an institution is to spearhead and start a capital campaign, which we'll launch this year with a grand goal of, and I don't know if anybody's actually said this out loud, other than Cindy and I to the congregation of raising $250,000 for the church. So we're in the beginning planning stages and getting ready to get geared up really quickly soon here. And I just wanted to take a chance to ask for everyone's support through their prayers, participation, et cetera, as we go through this 250th anniversary year and this capital campaign. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to Cindy or myself, but I thought it was very important to share this. But I must admit the $250,000 goal is scary to me and to say it out loud for the first time to all of you, it's kind of scary as well, but I think that, um, you know, if we pray and that we work diligently that we could easily achieve that. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to uh, speak about that and to encourage everyone's participation, questions, prayers, uh, et cetera. I thank you for this time to share that information with you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dan. What you all do not know, and we have to actually give his our respects to him, is that Dan has been working behind the scenes for Old Otterbein for probably as long as he can remember. If you find something done in the church, it's probably Dan's hands have been in it. If we're needing to get something um, accomplished, Dan's hands have been in it. And so he not only loves the church, he loves God in his doing. And for that, we always want to thank you and recognize that it may not be a big thing. It may not even be seen, but what you doing for the church matters. And so we want to really thank you and affirm you, Dan, for everything that you have done and continue to do and for being a steady 
presence at Old Audubon and that throughout this 250th campaign, recognize the reason that Old Audubon has existed for 250 years is because of people like you who have decided to offer their time, their talents, their um, monies, their abilities, and sometimes just their presence in this community of faith. So again, we really, really want to thank you. Um, and also I wanna take this time for those who um, want to say what Old Audubon means to you, please just tell Betty and we would definitely a lo a love for you to be able to, to say, like Daniel, he sort of, we did have to twist his arm, but, but what he gave us was such a, a gift for us. So don't think that your story is too small or too short because for some reason you're here and we want to know why. Amen. We respond to God's word through our faithful giving as Dan has done throughout the years. But we also want to know and, and uh, affirm that your giving is also um, not only appreciated, but it has helped us continue in ministry all this time. You may give your offering online at the, this is the uh, www.oldaudubon250.org donate. It's very easy for you to do. And your donation continues to allow us to not only exist as an offering, but as a ministry of faith. And God does love those who give and give faithfully and cheerfully. We thank you and we look forward to continuing with you in ministry. Amen. This is time for our announcements and also to recognize our prayer and prayer concerns. We do want to lift up um, an unborn member of our, our extended family, the second great grandson of June with uh, Risley Callen is still being uh, still being uh, carried for in her mother in his mother's womb. But we want to pray that God continues to keep him and continues to help him grow and, and thrive, even in the womb. The scripture says that, that God knows the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper and give us a uh, prosperity, and he sees us in our mother's womb. So we do want to uh, lift up Callan, our unborn extended family member, amen. And there are several members of our extended family that we are continuing to pray for. And you want to make sure that you print out the prayer list and pray throughout the, the week. God hears our prayer. God hears everything that we say. Even if we don't have the formal prayers to pray, God still hears. And God hears and affirms our prayer. So continue to pray throughout the week. Amen. Um, Old Audubon, we are now virtual today. Um, we will have a, um, a meeting soon to talk about um, our op reopening well. So continue to pray as the uh, people for this committee are really carefully considering how to reopen the church for on uh, in-person worship. 
those prayers are greatly appreciated and recognize that this entire year, they have had our best interest at heart. And we really want to affirm the people who were part of this, um, um, uh, for this uh, prayer and for our worship services, amen. We uh, still have noon days prayer on Wednesdays. The, the uh, number is here. It is a 701, not 710. Uh, we're waiting. We will pray with you during noontime. It is a great time to just stop. And even if you're at work and you don't have a chance to call in, pray with us during that time. And God will definitely hear our prayer during that season. Our first quarter mission is the Pro Bono Resource Center, Resource Center of Maryland. Um, it, is an or, uh, it is an organization that continues to help us in mission um, to uh, support uh, people who need uh, training, especially, I mean, I'm sorry, to help people that need uh, issues with their housing and we and rent court. Um, they provide a, attorneys um, to help people so that they cannot be evicted. And this is part of the mission that we are in fellowship with. So when you give, give uh, also to our Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. You can uh, designate that on the giving line. And at the end of the quarter, we will send um, resources to them from Old Audubon. If you are gifting for, uh, uh, if you are shopping on Amazon, which unfortunately being quarantined, I have started shopping on, uh, on Amazon. If you would designate Old Audubon as your charity in Amazon Smile, then a portion of your, um, what you buy goes to old Audubon. It may seem like it's a lot, five cents, once, uh, uh, 10 cents or a dollar, but it all adds up. And we have uh, benefited because of your generosity. So if you're thinking about it, it doesn't cost you anything. You just have to look up old Audubon Baltimore, United Methodist Church. And every time you get something, even if it's a, uh, a jam jar, then part of your um, what you buy will be donated to Old Audubon. Amen. Our Lenten Bible study, we're near the end. We only have three more uh, times. It's called Fear the Fear of uh, Fear of the Other. There's no fear in love by William Willimon. And even if you did not get the book, come take part of uh, the uh, discussion. It has been a really really rich discussion about how do we uh, act as Christians? How do we love like Jesus loves? And we know we can always uh, learn to love better and learn, learn to live, love our community better. Uh, the Zoom link is there and you can look at it on our website or uh, in our constant contact. Today, after Sunday service, we invite you to participate in the Empower to End Opioid Use Initiative. Um, this program, we have been uh, chosen out of 10 churches uh, um, to uh, be in partnership with the American Heart Association. Um, now, the, uh, in the little verb, it says um, it, it, it uh, addresses increased opioid uh, use in African-Americans and Hispanic. But when you, it only takes about uh, 25 minutes to see this video afterwards. It is not talking about any particular group of people. It's just talking about the opioid uses of people. It will educate us in how to uh, see and how to uh, be able to not necessarily treat, but what to do if you find or know of someone who has a uh, addiction to opioids. And believe it or not, almost everyone in there has somewhere in their family who may be either 
addicted to or dependent on opioids in their family. And so we want to be educated on what, what are they? What are the street names? What can we do and what can we do to help? See, please, after church, it only takes about uh, 25 minutes and then we'll have a, a question and answer after that. So we invite you just to stay. You don't have to do anything extra. It's no extra fees. Um, but we're supposed to, we're trying to get the word out to be able to end, end opioid addiction in not just African-Americans and Hispanics, but in everyone who has been affected by opioid usage. Um, volunteers are needed to feed hungry people. If you'd like to volunteer at the Maryland Food Bank, which is now open for volunteers again, yay. Um, please contact Betty at the number that is there. Uh, there are dates during the week of April 19th, uh, April 12th and April 19th. And a movable feast, which we have been uh, volunteers with before, will be opening up soon for new volunteers. It does require you standing on your uh, three hours or more um, in your feet on your feet, but it is a way to show your love for people and love for others. Um, so if you're interested in terms of the Maryland Food Bank or the movable, movable feast, please um, contact uh, Betty. She will get you connected and you don't have to do have any special talent other than the talent of being yourself and being a volunteer. And thus ends the announcements. Are there other announcements? If there are not, it is now time for our celebration, our joys and our concerns. You are vaster than we can imagine. You are more amazing than we can put into world. So with awe and deep gratitude, we pray and please unmute yourself as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, 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 and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, 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 and lead us not from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power, power and, the power and, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And if you could please join me in our closing hymn, it will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal number 428 for the healing of the nations.
Let us bow our heads for the benediction. Let us rejoice for God so loved the world. May your God, your maker, send you back into the world with the creative energies refreshed. May Christ the light illuminate your darkest moments. May the Holy Spirit of steadfast love guide you until we worship together again. May this day and forevermore Go in grace and peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen and amen.